Hey everyone, how are you doing? Uh, I guess if I'm gonna start a uh, talk about how to find fossils or looking for fossils, it's probably not fair to use a image of a fossil I actually purchased. Um, but the fact is you can't find all the fossils you want on your own. You have to buy some and uh, especially some really beautiful ones like this Entelodon, which reminds me of a dragon. Uh, this is about 25 million years old. And then of course there's a saber tooth cat uh, canine. And I have been on trips where people have found these. Uh, this one I did not find myself. I would like to talk about a couple of places though that are easy to get to if you're doing road trips, especially uh, Wyoming, Utah area. Um, there are others in Montana. The first place I'd like to talk about is the Green River Formation, and that's in Kemmerer, Wyoming. And this is an area that uh, the waters dried up about 48 to 53 million years ago. And this is, if you've ever seen uh, little fish uh, limestone plates, pretty much in any fossil or rock shop, this is where they come from. And in Kemmerer, the earth is stripped at the right altitude where these waterbeds dried up. And you can go and a uh, number of services uh, will charge you for either half or full day to give you, some, give you the tools to break apart limestone and find fish. And not everything is, is awesome. Uh, there's a lot of fish poop or just nothing and then, or fish pieces because things crack the wrong way. Uh, but some of them are awesome. You can't keep the really great stuff, like if you find a turtle or even palm fronds or a dragonfly, uh, you have to give them to them because those are the things that are uh, worth enough money that it pays the bills for them to live out there. Uh, if you real dragonfly lands on your hand, you get to keep that. Uh, fish that you get are really cool. Uh, this is how they look when they come right out of the stone. There's no prep work, no staining or seals or anything done to this. And then with the uh, larger one, I put the positive and negative uh, together in one frame. And then for the second frame, I did two little fish, the positives, looking at each other. We brought my niece and nephew there, uh, ages 8 and 10 years old, and it was quickly rewarding and lots of fun. The second place I'd like to mention is you dig fossils in Delta, Utah. Delta is close to nothing, um, but I did go there uh, after a trip to Bryce Canyon. And when you're hiking around Utah, you can find all sorts of modern bones. I would have hated to be there when this cow exploded. At you dig fossils, you find trilobites. And trilobites are arthropods that just started showing up on Earth around 540 million years ago. Most of the ones you find are going to be little ones like this, and you can find some bigger ones here. I mounted the positive and negative in a single frame. The Udig fossil site is shale, so it's a little harder to break than the limestone and Kemmerer, but still just as rewarding. The next place I'll mention is Montana and Wyoming. I'm not going to mention specific places. Uh, there are a number of places you can just drop in for a day. Uh, if you do a Google search, you'll find them. These photos are from a number of uh, private ranches and small group digs uh, they've had to organize way in advance. And here's a, uh, a place that you can see some dinosaur footprints, um, little raptors, and then also a giant uh, T-Rex footprint there. You never know what you're gonna find. It's, help, it's helpful to go places where people have found stuff before to give you an idea. Here are a bunch of Cretaceous plants. Uh, another ranch we went on, uh, digging through uh, some dirt, looking for things. And you know, every time you see something little poking out of the ground, you immediately imagine like, oh, this is it. I found something huge and important. Uh, unfortunately, that's not usually the case, but it's still fun. Here's part of a Cretaceous turtle shell uh, sticking out of the dirt, and here it is uh, cleaned up. And I've also found a chunk of Triceratops brill. And here's a hadrosaur uh, toe bone. And with the dinosaurs, the Cretaceous period, about 80% of what you find is either going to be hadrosaur, which is uh, commonly known as duckbill dinosaur, or triceratops. Here's part of a rib. So the thing that makes uh, being a grave digger uh, the most fun is when you have a partner in crime. And so here is my partner uh, digging up a part of a hadrosaur scapula that she found. Here the bone is uh, cleaned up. And then, uh, by coincidence, I already have a large hadrosaur scapula, an Adamantrosaurus, and this looks like it's part of the same bone. So really cool to find such a big piece of bone. Uh, here's a small uh, raptor tooth that I found. It's probably Nanotyrannus, but hard to say. Um, it has beautiful serrations. Here's a picture of it uh, when it's repaired. 
And usually when you're out walking around, you're going to find little pieces of stuff uh, just sticking out of the ground, and that's where you know to kind of probe around and look more. Uh, sometimes that's it. There's just little pieces that were exposed by the winter uh, snow melt and the spring uh, showers, and if you don't pick them up, they wash away. When your dreams come true, you're finding the tip of the iceberg. Here are a bunch of pieces of oreodont that, uh, that we dug out. Oreodont was in the Oligocene, it was a mammal that was a common grazer in the plains area. Um, these were the food for the early uh, precursors to the saber-toothed cats. And when you're walking around, you have to keep your eyes open because there are tiny little bones, uh, tiny little fossils uh, mixed in. You know, not everything has to be huge, awesome fossils. There's some really nice toe bones here. The nice thing about doing this and picking up everything is that you're going to end up with a lot of stuff. And this is the sort of things that you can give away to friends. You know, whether it's parts of jaw segments, ribs, plants, dinosaur bones, uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff here. Sagittal crest of a skull uh, from probably another Oreodon. I hope this inspires you to go out there and find some bones. And if you can't, well, feel free to contact me and see if I have any extras. Happy hunting!